Hi everyone, I'm Jess, the Director of Adult Services at SCPL. I thought I'd talk to you today about one of my favorite actors, John Cho. John Cho was born in Seoul, South Korea to parents who ultimately immigrated to America when he was six years old. His dad actually grew up in North Korea and moved to South Korea during the Korean War. After settling in Southern California, Cho went to UC Berkeley and then started working on acting. His first notable role was in American Pie. Even though it was a small role, he continued to appear in the other films in the series. After that, he was cast in Better Luck Tomorrow, which is a Justin Lin-directed film. And if you know his name, that's because he's directed films that are also part of the Fast and Furious franchise and the Star Trek franchise. After that, John Cho became a bigger and bigger star. He now has over 100 credits to his name, including everything from film to TV to voice acting for both animated shows and video games. John Cho is widely respected in Hollywood for his ability to cover all genres and all types of acting from high genres like drama to science fiction to horror to comedy. He is also very well known as one of the most visible Asian Americans in acting today. In 2016, Cho was the face of the social movement, hashtag starring John Cho, which replaced him with other people that were in romantic comedies, sitcoms, Avengers films, anything like that, and instead his face appeared in the posters so that we could see what it was like to have an Asian American as a leading man, and I have to say it looked pretty good. He's also known for being congratulated by fellow actors and other people in Hollywood for his roles in both Parasite and Crazy Rich Asians, neither of which he was in. So let's get started. I'll tell you all about my three favorite John Cho films. Here we go. Number three, Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. Harold Lee and Kumar Patel just wanted White Castle. They get a whole lot more than that in the 2004 film, which drags the best buds across the seedy underbelly of central New Jersey in search for their special sliders. After a stressful day at work for Harold and a botched med school interview for Kumar, they partake in some recreationals and ultimately get the munchies. Only White Castle will do, but the nearest White Castle is all the way in Cherry Hill, which is over an hour away. What starts off as a pretty innocent and relatively short road trip ultimately devolves into a comedy of misadventures across the state, from farmland to city streets and from Princeton University to, for Kumar, a jail cell after he jaywalks. Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle is probably one of the funniest films I've ever seen. I remember seeing it in the theater in 2004 with my best friend, and to this day neither of us feels the same way about Wilson Phillips' song, Hold On. And even though this movie is old enough to drive, its sharp commentary about racism against Asians in America is just as relevant today as it was in 2004. One of the best things about this film, too, is the chemistry between John Cho and his co-star, Cal Penn, who plays Kumar. You can tell that they have fantastic chemistry, and it's almost like you know that they've been best friends from the start, even though they're acting. If you like Pineapple Express, Half Baked, Dazed and Confused, Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle is definitely the film for you. And if you've already seen Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle, there are two more movies in the trilogy, Harold and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay and A Very Harold and Kumar Christmas, which I tend to watch with my parents every time the holidays roll around. Just in case you're wondering also, the closest White Castle to us here in Spartanburg County is in London, Kentucky, which is 195 miles away. Number two, Searching. Searching is a film that truly shows John Cho's range. Searching is a 2018 mystery thriller that follows David Kim and his daughter Margot, who is in high school, and we get a good perspective of their life up until that point. Through the camera, we see a very reminiscent to the movie Up retrospective through photographs screenshots, text messages, and videos of Margot and David and David's wife, Pamela. Over time, the clips grow to incorporate other family, friends, and ultimately Pamela's cancer treatments and death. Not long after Pamela dies, Margot disappears, 
And David is disappointed by the direction of the investigation of her disappearance. So he decides that he's going to find her, mainly by digging into her computer, phone, and the videos that she made for a website very similar to Instagram. What makes searching so special and unique is that just like in Harold and Kumar, John Cho manages to build incredible chemistry, but this time it's even more impressive because it's through a computer screen. As the viewer, we watch the film as though we're inside the monitor, looking out, seeing John Cho as he types at the computer, seeing text messages as they pop up on the screen, and even TV footage. Viewers can watch the entire film unfold as though we're inside of the computer, but we're able to see David's face as he absorbs all of the information that he learns about his daughter that he didn't know before. Searching offers a very creative twist on what would otherwise be your typical mystery plot. And with John Cho at the helm, it's just as emotional as it is satisfying. Number one, Columbus. The first time I watched Columbus, I thought if I could make a movie, if I had the money to make a movie, right? If I had the resources and the time and my dream cast was available, it would look and feel a whole lot like Columbus does. The 2017 film, which is directed by Koganada, who is a popular critic who writes for Sight and Sound magazine, takes place in the titular town of Columbus, Indiana, which is a mid-century modern haven for architecture. John Cho's character, Jin Lee, returns from South Korea where he is working as a translator to America after his famous architect father collapses in Columbus, Indiana shortly before he is supposed to give a talk to architecture students there. He is thrown into a coma and Jin has to decide how he's going to proceed with his life when his father is essentially in a vegetative state. While he's there, he strikes up a friendship with a local named Casey who is not long out of high school and is working at her local library as a page, shout out to libraries of course, and she is primarily the caregiver for her mother who is recently sober after dealing with a drug addiction. Jin and Casey develop a friendship based on the fact that they are both children caring for parents and they both struggle with and talk about the ties that bind and the things that keep them in the paths that they are in, the ways that they can change and the ways that they can't. All of those conversations take place at some of the incredible real life places, the churches, banks, schools and historic homes of Columbus, Indiana. As usual, John Cho's ability to build chemistry with his co-stars, in this case, the incredible Haley Lou Richardson, who is a brilliant actress in her own right, truly shines in Columbus. The beauty of the film lies in every aspect, from the music and the writing to the cinematography and the setting and the editing of the film. This film was shot on location in Columbus, Indiana, and there's even a walking guide online that will tell you where each scene was shot. Before COVID happened, I was actually planning to go there this summer, so Columbus, Indiana, I will see you soon. I love architecture and beautifully shot locations. I love John Cho, so of course I love Columbus. Now, if you don't wanna wait for the DVD to come in when you put it on hold for the library, you can actually watch Columbus right now on canopy.com. Just go there, enter your library card number, sign up, search for Columbus, and then click play, and you'll be able to watch the film right now. Those are my three favorite John Cho films. If you want, you can place them on hold at the library, either through the SCPL mobile app or on our website, spartanburglibraries.org. If you do watch them, I'd love to hear what you think. Leave me a comment, let me know at the AV desk. Make sure that you check out everything else that we have going on for our virtual programming. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay well, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Bye.